this is Captain Chaudhary. I welcome you on my second video on angle of lol. Last time I uh, discussed the basics of angle of lol and now in this session we'll try to see what are the problems in respect of angle of lol as far as the stability is concerned uh, as far as you know uh, getting back to the normalcy is concerned. There are only a few ships which are destined or which are ill reputed in respect of coming to angle of lol particularly number one because of the possibility of the ships becoming top heavy and second one because of the excessive free surface effect so in these ships the senior officers should in advance you know should have looked at the options what could be the options on these ships let us discuss uh, let us say uh, for example this particular ship hypothetically has got say top side tanks and the double bottom tanks may be port starboard and center and let us look at a situation where there was free surface effect in these tanks all of these tanks <coughs> and uh, there were options available I mean I'm just saying that uh, uh, this is a hypothetical situation you could uh, be dealing with the bunkers Right now what I am trying to tell you is this might be the ballast because of some reason it is kept and if we are able to transfer the weight to lower tanks and remove the free surface effect in all these tanks maybe there is some free surface effect still in the top side tank but there is a total free surface effect removed like in case this is ballast it could be pumped out in case it is bunkers there is possibility that we are not able to remove the entire free surface effect but one must understand number one we are shifting the weight downward we are shifting the weights downwards and number two we are eliminating free surface effect so it is the double effect towards the positive stability it is the fastest way to get back to the normal condition of stability like if you have the tanks with the liquids where the liquids can be transferred to the lower tanks and some free surface effect can be eliminated that is one of the best things you could do in the angle of lol situation let's look at another situation where the uh, ship is say top heavy because of some xyz reasons undeclared weight or the weight becoming uh, excessive on deck etc and uh, let us say there is this port starboard and center double bottom tank this ship goes to angle of lol now when the ship goes to angle of lol the ship gets tilted then what happens is this becomes the low side this becomes the high side there's some kind of panic the ship is tilted etc but please remember this inclination this angle of lol is not because of extra weight on one side it does not mean that starboard side has got extra weight it means that ship is either top heavy or it has got excessive free surface which means that putting the ballast on the high side is not the solution in fact if you put the uh, ballast on the high side what might happen is as I uh, explained you uh, in my last video that you have angle of lol on both the sides like from this angle of lol you are trying to shift the vessel to this angle of lol and the vessel may not stop over here and may go very close to the capsizing angle on the other side so we don't want the ship to flip over so uh, in addition to the stability aspect we also have to con consider the seamanship aspect the way the ship should be headed the way the ship should be headed so that there is minimum chance of rolling on the other side so the thing is we need to put the ballast here but then how much ballast to put so uh, there is some amount of calculation we need to do I will explain you assuming that the vessel is wall sided for uh, the angles of inclination that we are dealing with and if the vessel is wall sided say for example if this is the inclined condition and what we say is the center of buoyancy and center of gravity are in one vertical line and we have port starboard center tank 
What happens when we add ballast to the low side? First of all, we are making the ship bottom line. We are trying to pull the center of gravity down, right? And uh, instead of putting it here, we are putting it on the low side. But how much ballast? Suppose, uh, let's, stay, let's say that displacement of the ship is, uh, say, 18,000 tons. And let us say BM of the vessel is 4.8 meters, draft is 8 meters, KB is 5.1 meters, angle of lol is equal to 10 degrees. We have this wall sided formula which says GZ is equal to GM plus half BM times square theta multiplied by sine theta and we also know that if you have angle of lol on one side you also have angle of lol on the other side and we also know at angle of lol the uh, writing lever or gz is equal to zero and if gz is zero at angle of lol this entire expression on the right hand side is zero but we know that angle of lol exists it is 10 degrees say for example in this case so sine of 10 degrees cannot be zero. Sine of angle of law is not zero. That means the expression inside the bracket is zero, which means that minus GM look at this expression minus GM is equal to half BM tan square theta that I've got because the bracket is zero. Now, uh, if we have the negative GM by calculation, we can find out what could be the angle of law. And if we have angle of law, which we can see 10 degrees in this case, we can find out what is the negative GM. So in this particular case, it would be half into BM, which is 4.8 into 10, 10 square theta. That means 10 of 10 degrees, the whole square, you know. This means if I know the angle of law and if I know a few hydrostatic particulars, I can find out what is the negative GM. And as uh, we uh, discussed in my last class, last video, that if you have a negative GM of a particular value, which we can find out here, the double of that approximately, double of that in positive uh, uh, way and multiplied by secant of the theta secant of angle of law will give me the GM at angle of law, the positive GM at angle of law. Now I know the GM here. I know the kg of the ship because once I know the GM, I add that to KM. KM is KV plus BM. I know KM and KM plus the GM that I obtained from here will give me the kg. That means that suppose uh, KM like for example, in this case, the KM is 9.8 meters right kg is likely to be more than 9.8 which means 9.9 10 etc so once i know the kg suppose it is 10 meters i know the double bottom center of gravity is say 0.7 meters from the key once again km is 9.8 suppose i get the kg as 10 meters 10 meters is the center of gravity above the keel 0.7 meters the center of gravity of double bottom above the keel that means if i'm putting the liquid in the double bottom tank you know uh, i am loading the liquid at a distance of 9.3 meters from the center of gravity 9.3 meters from center of gravity i am putting the ballast how much ballast i should be putting load W amount of ballast there, then uh, this W should be sufficient for two purposes. You know, we should not forget the uh, free surface effect. This W should cater for two things. One is the free surface effect, and second one is negative GM. That means that ballast that I put here should be sufficient so that the free surface effect which it shows is eliminated and the negative GM which was there that is also eliminated. Now the free surface effect. Suppose the tank the double bottom 
length is say 20 meters, uh, breadth is say 9 meters, then 20 into 9 cube upon 12 into 1.025, you know, this is the free surface moment it will cause and divide by the displacement plus uh, the weight that is loaded. So approximately we can say uh, this is the free surface correction you need to correct. We need to correct this free surface correction and we need to correct the negative zero. Suppose the total amount of center of gravity that you need to uh, raise is uh, 0.4 meters, right? So that 0.4 meters should be W into 9.3 divided by original displacement plus W. So this equation can give you how much ballast should be taken in the double bottom tank so that the free surface correction as well as the negative GM is taken care of. So people who are sailing on this ship should be aware of these kind of calculations like you know when uh, we are taking the ballast from the low side you know how much ballast we should take so that the free surface effect which is generated is also taken care of and the initial negative upright GM is also taken care of. So this is the calculation for that. We are able to find out what is the weight of ballast that should be taken. All of us we have read from our basic textbooks that you know wherever there is angle of lawn you fill up the low side and initially the inclination will increase and later on it will start decreasing but there is a lot of complication. It is not all that easy that you see the ship inclining for a few degrees more and then she comes up. Please remember, deck as immersion is a critical thing. It's a dangerous phenomenon. It should never happen to you. It means that you are welcoming the waves. You are welcoming the green seas. Come on board and devastate me. That should never happen. The free board is given to you after a lot of calculations, a lot of stinginess. Save every millimeter of the free board. So we need to look at so many other things like this is the basic thing we have learned that fill up the low side initially the ship will incline and later on she will come up. But let us see what all things can happen in between. Please uh, remember one thing as you uh, fill up more and more liquid on the low side and suppose we are talking about something like 100 or 150 tons or 200 tons. Please remember you are also causing the listing moment. Uh, I will tell you both the things, bad thing and the good thing. First, I will tell you the bad thing. The bad thing is, uh, basic formula for list is tan theta is equal to GZ1 upon GM, right? GZ1 upon GM. But consider a situation where is GM is zero and GZ1 upon GM therefore becomes infinity because anything divided by zero is infinity. So we cannot think about a list that will happen when the GM is zero. Now let us talk about good thing. The good thing is the ship's uh, profile, water plane area increases in size. Ship's breadth increases in size. And earlier I told you the BM, that is the vertical distance from B to M, is directly proportional to the beam square. So in this case the beam is B sec L. So as the ship inclines more and more, as the list is more and more, actually the GM is much higher than the upright GM. Right? And that is how the GM becomes positive. That is one of the reasons that the GM becomes positive in angle of law. As the ship inclines, let us say the inclination is because of three reasons now. Number one, the inclination is because of negative upright GM. That is angle of law. Number two, the inclination is also contributed by the free surface effect. And number three, the inclination is also because of listing moment. So uh, ideally what should happen is as more and more water goes down you know there will be a stage at which free surface effect will be not there. There will be a stage where you know uh, the element due to angle of law starts reducing you know although the element because of list is increasing but the combined what we are interested in is the free surface effect gets eliminated and the combined component of angle of law and list starts decreasing. That is what we want. But it is not all that simple. It is not all that simple. 
till you fill up the double bottom which you have started with you know you shouldn't have free surface effect in too many double bottoms so you have picked up one double bottom and when you have started filling that double bottom free surface effect will be there for quite some time so now uh, the question that lies with us is what is the size of tank that is available what is the free surface moment that is caused by that tank because free surface moment is going to be the biggest villain when we are correcting the angle of law so what i suggest is these ships which can sometimes go to angle of law in somewhere in the middle uh, of the ship somewhere uh, in the middle and in double bottom area why not have the tanks which have lot of divisions you know uh, four and a half bulkheads like different tanks with four and a half bulkheads so that the breadth of the tank is not much so if the breadth of the tank is uh, 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 small we can definitely handle the angle of law very nicely that means we pick up one tank at a time and then we have a choice you know we can go to a, a center line tank which which might be very small as long as we are keeping a very strong bias towards the listed side we are not allowing the vessel you know environmentally to heel over on to the other side as long as you know there are several tanks we can play with the tanks and very confidently we can fill up these tanks you know and uh, a good result can be obtained instead of you know uh, trying to have lot of free surface effect and a large quantity of water only on the one side i don't say you fill up the tanks on the higher side no you uh, have a very strong bias on the inclined side you know don't fill up on the high side but there is a choice that you can fill up the center line tanks because please remember by the time you eliminate the effect of resurface effect and negative upright gm you have so much of listing moment that that itself will capsize the vessel you know so uh, uh, i very strongly suggest that you should have uh, several tanks like on these kind of ships you know the breadth of the tank uh, can be very small something like 6 uh, uh, meters or less than 6 meters say 4 meters or something like that it definitely needs uh, a fresh look in respect of such ships like if the angle of law uh, uh, tends to happen on these ships so these ships should have better measures to take care of angle of law now uh, i for the existing ships if you are worried that your ship can go to angle of law first of all in any loaded condition a master chief officer he should try and see various uh, situations which can happen in the voyage can their ship go to angle of law what happens you are using bunkers from the bottom you are creating free surface effect in the bunker tanks you are placing the bunkers in different tanks depending on your convenience and then uh, sometimes the timber suppose the timber is loaded on deck you may have a strong extra load of moisture on the deck and the ship may go to angle of law what i suggest is uh, the officers on these ships they can play with their loadicator nowadays loadicators on the ship they have the uh, uh, the form of the ship so the stability and damage stability calculations which can be done on these computers are live so you can play like what happens if the ship has got say uh, minus uh, uh, 0.2 as the gm what is the angle of law you would go to and we when we fill up the tanks like uh, in a particular sequence you know taking a smallest tank uh, tank with the minimum breadth tank with uh, already existing free surface effect so he can uh, the the officer can play a different kind of games like what is the best way to get back to a good stability or positive stability well then thanks a lot that's it from my side in this video i hope you enjoyed you've taken some food for thought and you can think more on these lines Thank mm -hmm. you.